So I was receiving some questions on Discord about how to make screw joints work. So this is just going to be a real quick tutorial on how you build them. So screw joints, they're essentially a replacement for axles. You can use them on your drive bases. So you can see that's a screw right there. And that is what the wheel is rotating around. There's no axle in there. Um, it's lower friction, uh, less prone to error. Um, you can see it over there as well, both of these robots. Um, they're also better if you have to do something cantilever. They're not just for drive bases, but that's their primary use. So starting off with, um, if you're doing a drive base, you're going to want to use a 2.25 inch screw. And I'd recommend the RoboSource ones because they have a small little shoulder on them. Yeah, you can see they have a small little shoulder, which helps align them. And that's going to work if you're doing a uh, three hole gap like this, or if you're doing four hole gap like that with your C-channel spacing. So get this screw on wherever it needs to go. And then you're going to want to put a nylock nut on that. So just get a nylock nut on the end and then tighten it all the way down. I'd recommend using a drill if you have one. It's very important to use a nylock nut, not a caps nut. I use caps nut for my spin-up robot and a wheel fell off in round of 16 at Worlds. So use a nylock nut. And make sure that's nice and tight. Don't want that coming loose on you. So now this is secure and there's going to be very, very little wobble right there, which is important. So also, if you do have to use something cantilever, this is why I'd recommend screw joints over axles because this is pretty tight. So next up, you're going to want to make whatever is going on it. In this case, I'm going to use a 48 tooth gear attached to a 3.25 inch wheel. This would be something that you would probably want if you're running 450 RPM on 3.25 inch wheels. So first of all, also you might need to put spacing in there. I chose this gear size specifically because you wouldn't, but you might need to have spacers in between the gear and the wheel, just depending on what size you are. Like if your wheel is larger than the Omni rollers, and a common example for that would be 48 tooth gear on a 2.75 inch wheel. So the first thing you do is make sure everything is lined up nicely like that and get your screws, put them in. It's important that you put the screws on the gear side of things as that's just gonna be slightly more space efficient. So then once your screws are on, usually you just need two screws, flip it over and you're just gonna put nylock nuts on these. Yeah, so now your nylock nuts are on and the reason you do it that way is because the nuts go inside of the wheel and it's gonna make it a lot more space efficient, especially if you're trying to do something with a three hole gap. So first off, you're gonna get a metal washer, thin, um, not required, but it's gonna help reduce friction. Then on your wheel right here, you're gonna get two brass, brass inserts. The regular circular inserts will work too. Uh, but this is just, I find, slightly more friction efficient. And it also works better with these new 48 tooth gears. So we'll get these on. They like to fall out. Slide that on to the shaft. Put your other insert in. Now you have something very nice and free spinning. And ideally, you'll put some spacers on there and have another C channel to cap it off on the other end so that it can't wobble out. But in this case, I'm just gonna put a nylock knot on the end um, and not have an entire another C channel going on. And then you're gonna end up with something very low friction as a joint. So run that down. As you can see, it's pretty low friction, definitely a lot lower than you're gonna get with most axles and it doesn't require bearings. It's lighter, so I would definitely recommend you start using this in your design if you don't already.